Emeritus Desmond Tutu's 90th birthday today. Happy birthday, Arch. He's expected to attend celebrations at St. George's Cathedral in the Cape Town City Centre at noon. But first, his family and friends and members of the clergy expected at his house in Milneton this hour. That's where we find senior reporter Aisha Ismail. Aisha, I don't, know about, I don't know about you, but I woke up with a little bit of a bounce in my step. And I think it's got to do with the Arch's birthday. You know, the mood has just lifted. What's the atmosphere at his home? Who's arrived so far? Well, Tapuma, when I woke up this morning as well, I did say a little prayer for the arch because, you know, 90 years old and he is very special to all of us. And, um, and just as we in South Africa would like to claim the arch for us, there's been an outpouring, not only from South Africa, a mountain of love and well wishes from across the world for Archbishop Desmond Tutu. But I'm now joined by his daughter, the Reverend Paul Tutu van Firth, who is going to talk to us about the life and times of her father. Now, as I said, you know, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is 90 years old. He is our beloved Arch, but he's also, of course, your father, your dad. What can you tell us? What are your fondest memories of your dad? Well, I, before I, I say that, I just want to thank you so much for the prayers and the well wishes. And of course, you know that he prays for all of us every morning as well. So um, the, the blessings um, uh, abound and return to each other. Um, I think that the, the thing that is most noteworthy about my father and the thing that I remember most about my father is my father is a person of prayer. Um, that is so much of the shape of his day and the structure of his life is built around his life of prayer. Um, so early in the morning, in the middle of the day, late in the evening, um, you'll find my father taking time out to, to be in prayer. And it is that life of prayer that has um, governed everything else that he does um, and from his prayer is born this great love of all of creation of all of humanity and a desire for all of us to flourish um, when when you look at the causes that he has championed throughout the course of his life you might think oh my gosh he's involved in this and that and the other and the other thing and each of those we we kind of take as separate elements but for him the logic that binds together all of the causes he champions whether it's children's rights or women's rights or LGBTQIA plus rights or um, the the uh, the right to, to live free of the fear of violence or or being opposed to war or um, or, or advocating um, for climate justice uh, advocating against racism and sexism and homophobia all of these things are not individual points on a map for him but they all come together as a love of creation and if the animating force is love then what it animates is justice and so my father um, is always for justice and always speaking in love and you're talking about justice of course we have to remember the role that he played during the trc process where he made it very clear that we cannot have freedom without reconciliation and we cannot have justice without truth absolutely um, we, we cannot have freedom without reconciliation, true freedom. Um, we, we recognize that we have come so many miles in our life together as a country, as South Africa, that we no longer live under, um, under apartheid laws. But we still live very much an apartheid reality. Um, and true reconciliation includes economic justice. And, and so as long as people continue to live in abject poverty, as long as there is such an obvious color line um, between the haves and the have-nots, um, that we know that, that this is not yet 
the reconciled South Africa for, of which he dreamed and for which he has worked. Now, we know there's going to be a service at St. George's Cathedral later today. Um, what is planned for the rest of the day? Oh, well, for the rest of the day, um, we'll, we'll come home and have a small celebration together as a family here, um, COVID. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we'll have, you know, continuing celebrations um, through the weekend, but small because we we really do want to respect people's safety so although my parents are vaccinated and and all of us who've been able to have access to the vaccine got vaccinated the minute it was available to us we know that that's not true for everybody um, but we we do hope and my father will emphasize please 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 if you have the opportunity to get vaccinated Go and do it immediately, uh, immediately. Thank you so much for your time. And, of course, that was the Reverend Paul Tutu van Firth talking to us about Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who has become known as the People's Arch. That's our senior reporter Aisha Ismail outside the home of the Arch. Thank you, Aisha, for that, and thank you for uh, connecting us with Mbotu to Van Perth, the Reverend. Uh, the uh, the Arch will have a special ceremony at St George's Cathedral later, and then, uh, like his daughter said, they'll go uh, back home and have a small family ceremony.